Okay, uh, let's see. Systems are go. Things are according to plan. We are turning on all the systems and fantastic. We seems to be live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome indeed. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nordic RTS report with me, Runors, bringing you yet another Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. Now, this is technically live, so it is not technically the Nordic RTS report. However, it will be uploaded to the Nordic RTS report, I hope at least, because I've checked out this replay and it looks really good so far. I checked about halfway and I'm crossing my fingers. I'm really, really, really crossing my fingers that this will become a smashing, smashing game. And with that, I will just check some final details. I will engage into the mobile phone so I can access my settings. Um, because I got Twitch on my mobile phone and it's really useful. Okay, I just gotta turn off the audio because I don't need my audio there. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna get straight into it because it is a sentence, ladies and gentlemen. It is a sentence match and it's going to be a smashing time because it is a mixture of 1700 rank player all the way down to 300. So we have lots of newbies, not noobs, but newbies. There's a big difference. Noobs is, well, a negative term of saying someone that doesn't know what they're doing and they can get rather angry, but newbies, they're just new to the game, they're trying to learn, they're trying to become better at it. However, we have a 1700 of the mix, and we're gonna start the game by calling this down here Team 1. Up in the right corner, we're gonna call it Team 2. I'm not sure what other people are doing, but for me, it has been that to the left and going to the right, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. But, without further ado, we're going to go straight into it and unpause it and see what happens. So then, let's see, we're going to go straight down here then. And down here we have, in the air position for Team 1, I'm going to click that way, we have Boxer Ru going Cybran and first air actually, and nothing else planned at the current moment. In the, actually, in the, let's see, naval position on the right side, we have Mix is going UEF in a lovely, well, let's see, let's say, um, elf flesh, and I forgot to say this is more of a lime green for, uh, Boxeroo. And he's going first air as well. Looks like it's going to be quite interesting to see what he will plan on doing with that. In the frontal position for Team 1, we have Fluffy going Cybron in lovely, lovely blue. And he's going first land. And lastly but not least, we have Mr. Bumpy going UEF first land as well in a nice lovely purple. So currently we have two Cybrans and two UEF. So forward and air position are Cybran. And the two naval position seems to be UEF. So it will be interesting to see what will happen. Now going for team two, we're going to engage, us all, engage ourselves in some lovely information down here, because here we have Hybrid going UEF in the air slot, first land, and seeming to work on a hydrocarbon power plant. In the island position of the hillside of the navy for team two, we have Bob the Noob, he's going Aeon. First air and second and third air actually, so he's planning something most likely indeed. And he's going a few power generators and some mass extractors and we'll see what happens. In the frontal position we have T1 Alec going Seraphim and in a lovely red. I forgot that, we have grey as the colour for uh, Bob the Noob. And hybrid is going a lovely uh, Hawk Turquoise I would call it. Now then, we can see here though that... At the current moment, T1 Alec is moving slowly but steadily towards the middle, and the same goes for Fluffy, but it's a little bit slower and seems to be planning on getting the mass extractors and sent an engineer to get the mass instead, but I don't think that'll pay off in the end, though, because he won't get that mass. And lastly but not least, for the second team, we have KF Fredon. He is going Seraphim in a lovely... well, that's a shade of... Yellow, I would say so myself, indeed. Okay, so he's going in a nice, lovely yellow. And at the current moment, he has gone, I think, first land. And then second air. I might be wrong, because I didn't pay attention to that in the beginning. But, as with most certain fights, it will get a little bit slow in the beginning. So what we shall do is engage ourselves to speed 2. As you can currently see that... 
Okay, Fredon is sending out a scout to see what is going on as Mr. Bumpy is a 600 rank player against KF Fredon because as we can see in the chat, uh, Bob Denum is complaining about the auto balance. So apparently they have used auto balance to try to get the most efficient game and as a result we have um, a bit of a mix up here in the terms of what can be the best to have. For example, Boxeroo is a 900 rank player while Hybrid is 1300. You have Bob the Noob that is a 500 against Mix's 1700 position. So this will be very interesting to see what will happen and T1 Alec is 1000 against Fluffy and 300, so this will be very fascinating to see. And at the current moment, there are some engagements going on here with Cybern and Seraphim firing at will. Cybern do have the disadvantage of the, well, <laughs> less health, but they do have slightly more region though, um, at least in the beginning. But now it looks like Fluffy is focusing on dealing damage to T1 Alex Com instead of trying to focus on getting the mass reclaimed. I'm not sure if that'll pay off for him as he's taking quite some fire here now from Ezui uh, Artillery as well while T1 Alex is managing, managing to scoop up a lot of mass for his teammates. At the same time we have a nasty little drop here coming out from... Uh, Oh, what is calling him? KF Fredon. I'm just going to call him Fredon or KF. KF had decided to actually drop on this island before uh, Mr. Bumpy can do something. And that will actually be very harmful for him because in the beginning, I do have to say to Mr. Bumpy, you do not need this many energy storages and I do highly recommend to actually move them away from each other. Otherwise, the resultant explosion that are from close to each other will be very dangerous and at the current moment KF has also managed to put an interceptor right next to where the commander is so that he's losing his well that's yeah it's a shoulder drone so now so he will get some extra build power but at the moment Mr. Bumpy seems to be doing okay in the eco but he's not building that much else and he's being harassed by bombers constantly so he doesn't have that much build power actually out on the field he's pretty much only has his commander and one factory to build. So this will be very interesting because at the moment uh, T1 Alec has taken some damage and had to fall back actually from the center and Fluffy has reached one rank of veterancy as he's now going for the engineers and there's a T1 point defense though so he might gonna have to fall back though because this is taking a lot of health point from him as more units are now spam spamming up and coming in here now. So I think actually Fluffy will have to fall back. So that will be very interesting to see because the highest ranking player on Team 1 is Mix. And he will have quite the time to try to defend his players uh, or his teammates due to the fact that if you lose the front you will be severely uh, troubled. And if you also lose the navy part here as you can see as several drops of Zuis are incoming fast and hard going after Mr. Bumpy's base and the shield is rapidly depleting as he managed to get inside of the shield and I'm not sure tech 2 point defense is the best idea here as the zoo is just plow through the shield uh, managed to just hit the shields a few more times but now the artilleries are firing on the triads and it'll go down before even gets one single shot and I implore you Mr. Bumpy please use your commands to actually attack the zoos there we go, fantastic. But there are several more zoos incoming here with a drop going after his eco though, so this will be very interesting to see. At the same time at the front we have severe low health point here on Fluffy. He needs to do some serious micromanagement, otherwise he is going to die. He's 200, I'm going to go down again. He is currently so low, he is really struggling here. He's 400 health point, one rank of veterans, so he has some extra. But now some much needed reinforcements of rhinos are incoming and dealing some nice delivered damage out two T1 Alex tanks that are moving in and it looks like Fluffy will just about be able to survive that and that was really close I do have to say so myself. Now at the current moment there are some Zuis and Thams moving in but these Rhinos will be able to deal with that mostly so it won't be too much of a problem but Fluffy has lost a lot of mass extractors. He didn't get any of the mass here from the looks of it and now T2 is being built or upgraded on T1 Alex's com. 
We see also several bombers, several drops coming out here. The only side that doesn't seem to be affected so far is Mix's base. He's also getting T2 and starting to actually get out some uh, cruisers. Have him, well, he does have a basic amount of Tiger Sharks. And at the current moment, he seems to be well ahead of... Bob the Noob, that only gets a T1 naval factory up and running about now. He does seem to have access to T2 air though, so you'll be able to have T Tech 2 torpedo bombers. But if Mix get enough of a navy online with T1 and T2 units, he will be able to steamroll uh, Bob the Noob. But at the moment, he seems to be busy trying to protect his teammates though with air, as he has diverted some of his attention to the T1 air factory and get some interceptors online. In the back here we can see that we have some tech 2 going on here for the lovely Boxeroo, but he is actually now going up to T3 now and looks to be actually quite well done there. He is decent in power, but as soon as he starts to build uh, tech 3 uh, ASFs, he will bottleneck in power unless he actually gets some engineers out first and then get some power generators to assist him in that production. At the current moment though, the team 1 has been severely pushed back, but they can pull through because they have Mix on the team. I'm putting a lot of pressure on Mix here, but he seems to be up for the task here because he seems to be everywhere at once. His engineers are everywhere. He have been putting engineers all over the place and what is going on here? Fluffy seems to be trying to build some mass farms, but he is he doesn't have any power for this. He should stop building that mass those mass fabricators and focus on getting the power up before he proceeds any further. Because the moment he starts to finish these mass fabricators, he's just gonna plummet in power. So that's gonna be very bad. So I employ try to get the power on first and then start getting the mass fabricators on. But instead of that, try to upgrade your mass extractors because you only have T1 mass extractors still. So if you can get these to tech two first, get more power online, spread them out a little bit or get T2 spread out with some shields instead of these mass fabricators because they suck power and you are bottlenecking like it is nobody's business. So at the moment you are in a bit of a pinch uh, unless you use these for defensive purposes. Uh, you are not going to do much of use in the frontline department unless it is just to deter an enemy attack. So at the moment it is pretty much up to the pl air player and the naval player to ensure that Team 1 does not lose the fight. At the Team 2, however, they have gone pretty much unmolested, so in hybrid space, he seemed to go for three T3 factors, actually. And we do we see any T3 air units. We have a T3 air factory with a power plant up and running, and he's now starting to produce, produce, I mean, scouts, and from the looks of it, it's going to be ASFs as well, momentarily. Uh, it looks like Hybrid is now going to scout, and once he sees that uh, Bob Boxer Boxeru, or I'm just going to call him Boxer, decides that he only has one T3 Air Factor HQ, it looks like Hybrid might, if he is at least what I would call clever, he'll decide to just eco a little bit longer because he can outbuild him since he has three Tech 3 Air Factories. So that seems to be what he's doing, is just focusing one T3 Air Factory on some rudimentary ASFs and the rest for engineers that he can use to expand his ego. So that's very good, that's what the airplay is supposed to do. They have managed to get three T3 air factories up and running. He is very good in eco and he's only 15 minutes into the game. So this is going to be very interesting to see and the, this game I saw was actually up to one hour long so that's really really impressive to see that the game managed to actually push that far. So either Mix is doing something very good or there's some sort of stalemate or something that makes the players scared to push through or they manage to let Team 1 build up. So this will be very interesting to see what happens. But the island here is still being taken. And that is so dangerous because now the mass extractors are being upgraded. It looks like also that KF will be able to get our take to naval factories, HQs, and a lot of tech 1 naval factories. So if he just focuses this on frigates 
and then get destroyers and cruisers for here and then get a T3 naval factory for sub hunters. The left side navy is completely lost at this point from the looks of it and we even have a tech 1 naval factory down in the middle of the land stripe so that is very interesting I do have to say. And at the moment though we see that Mix has managed to get out several shield boats, some destroyers and two cruisers actually, several submarines as well with the addition of frigates, and I do have to say, after experience, experiencing it firsthand, I absolutely hate and love the UEF Navy due to the fact that the jamming is horrendous unless you actually scout the enemy navy. The UEF Navy is horrible to fight against because of the jamming from the crews, the frigates. So if you fight with the UF Navy, always include a few frigates because the jamming will make life hell for the enemy player and unless they actually scout. And that takes some resources, that takes energy, because you have to then actually drag your mouse, click them over to where you want them to go to actually scout that area. So that is very good to see that he's mixing in T1, T2 units. From the looks of it, he's getting a lot of engineers that he can also use for later if he wants to get to T3. And he's moving his navy over. At the moment we seem to have a lot of T1 attack submarines, but he has just managed to get to T2 now, Bob the Noob, and he's getting at T2 engineers. At the moment I would recommend more than just spamming T1 engineers, but it looks like it's setting up a defensive line of T2 torpedo launchers. That can defend him pretty well, but he has quite a lot of uh, skimmers. So this will be very interesting to see what happens though, as the front line seems to be doing quite well. He has several point defenses, tactical missile defenses, and a shield. And what does actually T1 Alec have on his comm? Let's see, as T3 uh, on his commander, he has the nano repair system, and at the current moment that seems to be it though. So eco-wise, hybrid seems to be doing very well with 190 mass flowing into his coffers. We have Boxeru with 180 and Mix, which is a navy player and he's everywhere. He's protecting the front, he's getting the navy up, he's protecting the left. He is at a whopping 132. And then you have KF Fredon that has managed to take this island and he also controls the left sea. He, has, he is at the current number of 181 mass per tick. That is impressive. And then you have T1 Alec, which is the frontline player. It is expected to be a little bit lower in Nico. he's about 72. You have Bob the Noob, which is the right side navy, 83, massively falling behind Mix there at this point. And you have Fluffy here, which is seemingly trying to get his eco up, but somewhat failing. He is at 32 mass per tick, and then you have Mr. Bumpy that was completely decimated in the early stages when the Zooey's dropped in. He is down at 43. Now we see a small T1 push here, I call this small at this point, because now this T2 navy here will completely destroy and annihilate this. And the shield boat is actually protecting the rhino tanks, shooting at the enemy tanks as well. So this is good teamwork there. Probably not meant for it to be, but it's still good teamwork. So the rhino seems to be dealing out some punishing fire. There's a lot of zooies though, so he's got to be careful and micro them, otherwise he's going to lose them. And there are artillery firing from the gun emplacement here as well, but nice micro there indeed, and he has managed to get ranks of veterans here for one of the tanks. The only thing now, he can't push them forward though, he needs to protect them because there's no point of pushing forward with two tanks that are heavily damaged and he's lost one of them, which did have the rank of veterancy on it. And he's going to lose this tank to T2 point defense fire. So in my opinion, it would have been better to just pull them back, get them to safety and use them for base defense. Now that we see a ton of engineers. A ton of engineers is starting the reclaim action here because there's a lot of mass to be reclaimed here and I think that Mixus feels that he needs that mass and he has the dibs on it so to speak and that is understandable. He is getting a um, lot of T3 mass extractors. He has several scouts out and running to see what is going on and the air game so far seems to be very interesting because Boxer has 20 eight ASFs while hybrid seems to be on holy shit 41 okay I didn't see them at the front there okay never mind then I stand corrected hybrid seems to be leading in the air game at the current moment as he's now just focusing solely on getting out these ASFs his eco is surprisingly good 
and he is upgrading most of his mass extractors to T3 as well. So his eco is well established at this point. How's the eco to Boxer? He is currently bottleneck severely, but it looks like he's also getting a lot of resource allocation support commanders. So if you can get those out and running, he seems to have two or three already, so that can help his eco. He's getting several mass extractors to T3. And he's getting a strategic missile defense. That is very good at this point. If you don't have a strategic missile defense, usually at 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you will usually be at a disadvantage if the enemy then starts building a nuke. But I don't see any of the enemies building a nuke at this current point in time. So I think they're going to be safe, but you never know. It can always be a little bit nasty, but now the... Navy to Bob the Noob seems to increase a lot here with several frigates. We have a lot of Vespers, very good submarine hunters, but the torpedo defenses, I prefer actually those to the Siren, UEF and Seraphim because the uh, defenses here shoots outwards and then try to hit the target instead of just dropping some stuff. And at the moment though, the Navy of... Ah, here is he though. The KF Navy seems now to be using the Seraphim cruisers to constantly fire down here. And this is going to hurt Fluffy quite a lot unless you can get more zappers online. I'm going to think you're going to need at least two rows or three rows of zappers on this side here just to protect this Navy side. The same is going for Mr. Bumpy. That doesn't seem to have any defenses. He has a tech 2 radar system so he'll be able to see anything coming his way. But at the same time we have several units here actually and a landfall for KF actually. That is impressive but several point defenses here for Mix is starting to fire on the emplacement and that drop will fail and thank heavens for that. I mean Mix is everywhere. He has seemingly control of the naval area here. He is protecting the front and getting engineers out to reclaim and just get that eco so he can use it for his own good. And he's protecting the left flank as well as a tactical missile launcher seems to actually be firing now. So where is it going though? I think it's going for one of the mass extractors. Will it hit? Yes, it managed to traverse the entire mountain and hit one of the mass extractors. That was tech 2. So that is bad. That's gonna actually hurt Mr. Bumpy's egos quite a lot. Um, he is decent enough, but he doesn't have any sort of navy, he doesn't have any sort of things that can actually assist the team. So, at the current moment, the only one that seems to be doing something to actually help the team is Mix. You have, of course, a Boxer, and he has a complementary unit of ASFs, but it's only 52, while Hybrid seems to be on a whopping 86. So, in terms of numbers... Uh, hybrid seems to be leading, but that said though, it is a Cybran. The Cybrans have the additional drone support, the same goes though with the UEF, and that seems to be what's happening now. A complete network of several fusion reactors, air factory, holy shit, how many does he have? He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven air factories, and six of them is spewing out ASFs at a rapid pace, and his eco is severely hurting from it. But at the same time, if he just keeps on getting lots and lots of units and ASFs, he will be able to withstand most, actually, things here. As we can now, though, see a lot of the cruisers are firing in on the enemy here now. And the shield is looking strong. He's using, he's using action engineers. That's very good. We have T1 Alex that is using engineers to try to boost that shield uh, generator's power. But there's a lot of cruiser fire though, but they're moving up the cruiser actually, and the navy is moving upwards actually to the enemy point of Bob the Noob. But now we see a lot of T1 and T2 units are coming out here from Bob the Noob, and I'm not sure if Mix have the navy to deal with it. It will be interesting to see what happens. He's going after the wave breakers, and he might, he's going to be able to take out one of them, but... That's a lot of units, and he's being hit by artillery from this point, so that the shield boats will take a bit of a beating here. You have several T1 and T2 sub-hunters, well, T1 submarines, and some frigates, but not a lot of T2 destroyers. So, in terms of numbers, I think Bob Denou will actually lose this fight unless he can actually coordinate, because he's sending some of his units forward and leaving his T2 sub-hunters in the back. 
Which is a mistake in my opinion. But I think yes from the looks of it. This will be Mix's victory if I'm not mistaken. We see several scouts now coming out from hybrid trying to scout the middle part of the map and trying to get in here. Several scouts are going to be able to get in and see what is going on here now in Boxer Rob's face. And Boxer Rob seems to actually be doing well in the terms of eco as well. He's starting to catch up to hybrid which seems to be slowly creeping up against him, but I think that is because he managed to get this Summoner Tech 3 Quantum Gateway online, which allows him to get support commanders, which he has currently 8 of, and they each give off... how many do they give off? 11 mass each, and they can deal some damage, and if you also upgrade them with the um, anti-air, they can actually be quite a formidable foe, especially the cyber ones, due to the EMP weapon as well, if you add that to the commander. Now, from the looks of it, though, the right side of the Navy seems to be in well-established firm holds of mix. He's got several scouts here as well, several engineers that are moving out to reclaim and scavenge his field, from the looks of it. But at the moment, though, this is horrible. There are several, and I mean several, cruisers coming in here on the left side, going after the forward bases of Fluffy. And it's a cute little defensive line here, and against a small defense uh, attack force, it is quite effective, but he doesn't have nearly enough zappers. zappers. And this moment, purple just screwed me. Mm, I would say there, sir, that this won't be purple's issue. Yes, he should probably have tried to get a navy online, and he certainly started to get eco for it, but he is not building anything yet, but at the same time, I don't know, sir. I, I do have to uh, be a little bit nasty with you against this though, because you are bottlenecking power extreme. You have to turn this off. You, I, I implore you, turn this off, get T2, get more and more and more zappers, because you will need them. You will need zappers. E endless amounts of them. As at the current moment we see that, oh, this is interesting. Boxer has a large amount of revenants building up on the left side of the map while Mix is pushing in on the front on the right on the navy side Box is assisting Mix actually <laughs> to get a lot of navy factories up and running but he needs to be paying attention though because he needs to be able to protect his navies there because they are being attacked by some T1 bombers but a few contingencies of T well, T3 ASF will be able to take that out, but he's got to be careful now, though, because I don't think he can see this. Can he see this? Yes, he can see this. He need to move his ASFs back, so because otherwise he's going to lose them. Um, <clears throat> so, at the moment, I wouldn't engage in this activity, sir. I would not recommend engaging in here now. Oh, they're committing. They're committing. I'm putting down into plus one now. They're committing to the air fight, and at the current moment, it looks like Hybrid is getting a better pass than... Uh, Boxer does, and he is going to lose these ASFs rapidly if he's not careful, and at current moment though, Hybrid seems to be doing better in the air game than Boxer himself, but I could be wrong since they're so densely packed. I'm gonna have to turn down the speed a little bit and see how many ASFs are here. There are 133 ASFs, while Boxer has 47, so he really needs to fall back, but he did a very good maneuver there, he managed to get out of dodge, so that he didn't lose too many of his ASFs, and some of them actually has ranks of veterancy now, the same is going for hybrid though, so it will be interesting to see who can get the most ASFs up and running in time, after a certain amount of periods there we're closing in. The reason why Boxer seems to be struggling here now, it's because he's focusing on only two factories and one unassisted, while Hybrid seems to have a massive production production line here with seven air factory HQs. That is impressive though. Okay, so at the moment though, what is being said here? Uh, sorry mates, our air is a stupid. Uh, not a hard to build AA. I can't use it because there are cruisers. Good rating, it doesn't know how to play it. Well then, I do have to say there's Bob the Noob. Um, you have to understand though that this game requires a lot of teamwork and Sutton's is a very difficult map. You were very slow of getting out your navy in time though. And that allowed Mix to actually build up. If you had gotten out navy first, focused on eco and solely focused on getting your position secured, 
you would have managed to actually hold out much longer and get a much better uh, unit production going. Because at the moment, Mix has got three naval factories out and got to a T2 factory before you even built your first T1 factory. So that allowed Mix to get a um, significantly larger unit base than you. So you... I have to say though, uh, you can't put this blame on hybrid. I do have to say so, yes. This one is... Um, it's, a, it's a team game. And at the current moment, I did not see this. I'm sorry about that. Bob the Noob has actually given up. And he was hit by several cruisers just firing all their guns. And now we'll see though, if the full share is on. Yes, full share is on and he's going to hybrid. And let's see what that does to his eco. It's putting it up to a whopping 725 mass per tick. And that'll... That will increase his eco severely and allow him to maintain ASF production. And at the current moment, holy crap of Obi Wan Cannoli! That is a lot of T1 naval factories for mix, but there are several cruisers here and destroyers, though. So it will be interesting, though, if he can use the cruisers to focus target these factories. He can actually take this out, but if he tries to focus attacks on the frigates, he will actually struggle because they seem to be building faster than he can destroy them because of the cruiser's slow rate of fire and they tend to miss the cruisers or frigates. And he only has four destroyers and they're slowly attacking the naval factories. So this could actually mean that Mix can actually get in a naval position down here at the left flank. This is amazing. Mix is everywhere at once, but hello, ladies and gentlemen. We have our first Ithotha experimental on the field, walking under the waves towards the battle zone, far, far away. But if that managed to get ashore here, it'll do a hell of a lot of damage here because Mr. Bumpy is over here. Most likely no one is noticing this one. No one is seeing, actually, the Ithotha and I don't suppose to expect Ithotha down here as well, though. T1 Alec is slowly moving his way over towards KF from the looks of it. And Hybrid is actually not giving up. He is building from the looks of it more T1 torpedo launches. And he's sending in his Air Force now to assist here. And holy crap, he managed to get behind. Oh lord, Boxer. He lost his entire na his entire air. His entire air is gone, and from the looks of it now, more <laughs> an aircraft carry even is moving in, and Mix is going to lose this naval part of the map. But due to the fact that he has several cruisers, he has a lot of air, and Hybrid is focusing his attention on just one cruiser instead of pressing the control, or is it Shift G? Because then, if you press a lot of attacks and then Shift G. All the uh, torpedo bombers will spread out their attacks on the different targets that you have chosen. So it's going to be interesting to see though. Mix is going to lose units, but he's moving in his shield boats though. So that's going to be interesting to see what will happen. We have still some strategic bombers out for Boxer, but he needs to actually get more... Yes, here we go, fantastic. We see several more Tech 3 air factories are being produced, and he's building more power as well to assist with that production. Hybrid still has a large amount of uh, power production going on, and where is his commander? His commander is resting comfortably up here in this corner. He's actually building a duke, but the problem with the duke positioning that you have here, sir, is that the range is absolute shit. Uh, I'm sorry to say that, but... The Duke positioning, as it is standing here at the current moment, can't reach any single part of the base. You can assist, of course, of defending your position, but you can't do anything. But can the Boxer and the other guys see now? They can see a blimp here, but it's moving so slowly, I don't think they know what this is yet. And Mr. Bumpy is going to have a world of hurt, and I think he's going to be the one of the first players to go down besides Bob the Noob. So Team 1 is going to experience one of the first losses, unless actually they can scout more and Mr. Bumpy can escape. And they are going to lose that side of the map, I do believe so indeed. And unless something can be done, because Hybrid has a severe... Um, ASF count. Now 210 ASFs, while 
<coughs> That's impressive though. Boxer seems to be able to match up slowly but steadily. And getting up to 50 now in about a matter of manner minutes. Due to the fact that he has a lot of hives. How is his eco faring though? He's doing actually very well on the eco. And that seems to be the fact because he's getting more and more support armored command units. And he has a Tech 3 strategic missile launcher. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a strategic missile launcher. Do you have any nuke defense in this game here now? At the current moment, I can't see any nuke defenses here. Do we have a nuke defense there? Yeah, we have a nuke defense, of course, here that have... Oh, I did not... I did not expect this to get that fast, but yes, as predicted, the Ithotha has been able to move in and taken out Mr. Bumpy with that Ithotha. And now, Boxer will have to commit and send in his strategic bombers. But the problem is at this point as well, though, he is so close to the enemy airlines that he's going to be able to be hit by these cruisers. Luckily, though, it is Seraphim cruisers and they can be struggling a little bit. And that took his power down a little bit. And we have some Ravagers firing, though, but in straight line of fire for this Ithotha. And unless it's firing directly at the uh, Ravagers, it's going to die. And looks like the Revenants are actually surviving. And if you can just kill that one off now, it's taking some power... No, uh, point defense fire, and the several of the bombers, but at the current moment it's getting too far closing, it's got several ranks of veterancies, and it's now just standing there trying to just man maximize the damage since it's going to die. And let's see, do we have nuke defense here? We have a strategic missile launcher, and a nuke defense with three in the clip. We have, do we have any nuke defenses here though? Where is the commander to red? Commander has fallen back here. Do we have any nuke defenses going on on the left side? No, sir. Do we have any nuke defenses on the forward position here? I'm not sure, but due to the fact that the missile launch is there, it will go like that. It will go past the nuke defense header. So, unless he can fire it down here and cause a chain reaction, that nuke will be very risky. But now the Ithotha is down, though, but Mix will probably smell blood here and decide to send in a few of his, at least I think so, air transports to scavenge that wreck. But he's already ha he already has some engineers on the field here with some land factories. So if, if I am um, correct, he'll be able to defend that position. But <laughs> I do have to say, ladies and gentlemen, we have a megalith online. We have a megalith from Boxeroo and... He's currently moving up towards the part of the map here to try to deal with all these cruisers, and he can do it. It's going to be risky, though, and it's going to be dangerous, because that's a lot of navy. And there's another Ithotha standing here just waiting, and several of these support commanders from the Seraphim seem to be moving in as well. But he's just standing there. He needs to move this. He needs to move this immediately otherwise he is going to lose this and it's taking a lot of unnecessary damage because boxer is not paying attention pardon that i just have to shift my position because at the moment this is getting very intense and very interesting because boxer and mix seems to be the only p persons that keeps this game alive for team one he has managed to get it up to 146 units while hybrid has a whopping amount of 217 boxer has managed to almost take him back in the terms of air and we have several broadswords moving in there but now though it's going to be a quite the air fight here as box is losing a lot of his asfs as hybrid is again completely destroying the AF Air Force to Boxer, but now it looks like Boxer is diminishing his forces to hybrid a bit, and he's taking some damage and managed to get down to 163 instead of two over 200. And with the production line that is currently going on for Boxer, he seems to be also be able to get more air factors down here, that is very good. And does they have, yeah, they have a nuke defense. Okay, so they have a nuke defense, so there are nukes in the game, but they won't be able to do anything about that unless Mix is getting, for example, Tech 3 nuke submarines. That can actually change the game at a later time. We see several units here now actually fighting in with the broadswords moving in, and this is going to hurt a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Several broadswords are just taking a fire from a lot of the cruisers, but they are so tanky and beefy, it doesn't really matter at all. 
And where is the commander to Fluffy? Fluffy is here, and it depends if the broadsword decides to move in, or will they try to decimate the ego to Fluffy? I think they will, though, to ensure that he can't get any sort of traction, because he has eco now, but he's focusing to just building economy and not actually doing anything about it. And Boxer says he has two nukes in his clip, and how many nukes does he have? Does he have actually two separate nukes? He has, no, he has two nukes in one and one halfway done as well, with several nuke defenses, several shield generators, and does he have, yes, he has defense against sniping attempts. But at the current moment, we are sitting duck sail, ladies and gentlemen. The commander is going to go down fast and steadily now because there's a lot of broadswords coming in there. And if they take out the commander now, uh, that's a very bad move indeed because if Hybrid is not careful and move away his ASF, he's going to lose his entire ASF force because he's going after Fluffy at this point in time. And if he can take out Fluffy, oh, he's going for the mass fabricators. And if you can take that and cause a chain reaction, boom, baby, that is a lot of units. And Hybrid was clever indeed. He moved his ASF away to ensure that he didn't lose any of his ASFs. Uh, it didn't really did do much of a difference other than it just gave the power more, actually, eco over to uh, Boxeroo. And I would actually recommend giving some of this mass to... Oh, we have a nuke. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a nuke. We have a nuke. Where is that nuke going? Let's see, where is that nuke going? Let's see if we can find out where that nuke was going. It is firing straight towards the middle part of the base here to T1 Alec. And I don't know if there's any nuke defenses here. It doesn't look like it at the current moment. It looks like it would have been better to go for the main parts of the base, but at the same time though... Uh... Yes, current moment the actually better option, yes, would be to go for the eco. It looks like he's trying to get support commanders and some power there. So, yes. Uh, T1 Alec is moving his commander away just in case, but now he's actually... A second nuke is going offline, not online. So, where is that one firing, though? That is going to be interesting to see. It was firing over the air units, actually. I'm not sure where he planned on actually making that one stick. But now two two Ithotas and several Otham siege tanks are moving in across the left side of the map and this is going to be very dangerous indeed for all parties and the nuke short fires and hit the friendly side of the map though but Mix has a solid stand on the map here and he has several fat boys and support commanders to assist him to so get up here or anti-air fast enough because these fat boys can deal a lot of damage though but Jesus that's a lot of nukes for the good sir here and another nuke has been completed and where is he firing all these nukes this is very bad indeed because he needs to fire support nukes to actually assist here because now several Ithotas are moving in and the Megalith has taken a severe beating here now due to the fact they took all those fires from the cruisers and it's going to go down Unless he can actually get into the water, but this is taking too much fire here now. He can't even fire on the Ithotas anymore, and it's going to go down before he can even take down one of them. We have Otham tanks moving in now, but there is a Soul Ripper up and running. But even KF Frieden has managed to get air units, and why were they donated? No, they weren't donated. They were actually units of KF Frieden as well. He has managed to get his own air force up and running and currently we have 166 ASF to KF Frieden and 144 compared to Boxer's 79 ASFs. He is going to struggle hard dealing with this and unless we see units being built from mix here we are going to have a map or power change that is going to be severe. Now we see though that Mix is moving actually into the left side as well, putting pressure on his own on the enemy fortifications. He seems to be able to plan on getting more flares online, but I'm not sure they'll be able to get online enough of them until the broadswords are actually coming in here. Hopefully they'll be able to, but they only have three of them, and that's a lot of broadswords. And if they focus target the flares that are trying to produce, they are going to lose severely though. And the f broadswords are moving in past them actually. And that can actually be bad because if Mix managed to then get more flares online, he can protect them with the fat boy shieldings. But it looks like he's moving out into the water. 
And he's getting flak actually. Flak is very good because then you can crowd control, you have several flares. And they're targeting the fat boys and one of them looks like it's almost going to go down. He's going for the support commanders, but I would go for the flak cannons here with the air cleaners because he is taking a large amount of fire here, but the support commander explosion seems to actually deal enough damage to take out the air cleans as well, so I stand corrected indeed. All of these support commanders are going to go down, and one of the Ithotos have gone down, but this is another Ithotos moving in here now and going straight for these air units here. And looks like Mix is trying to spam out as many bombers as he can to take and deal with this because several of them siege tanks as well is coming in from the main part of the island. And now all these T1 bombers are now attacking and he needs to send in his Soul Ripper because this is very interesting indeed. Hello Rogue24, I'm sorry I didn't actually respond to you now before because I'm just trying to focus there because there's so much happening at this current moment. The Thota is moving in and dealing a lot of damage here now. He's going to get closer to this point here and take out this Tech 3 Air Factory installation if he is not quick about it. And he needs to get the Soul Ripper to go after that because the T1 bombers can't deal enough damage to actually get through that armor plating. And where is this Soul Ripper going? I don't understand this. He needs to send them in here because he is going to lose all of his actually power production here now. Unless he can actually... Oh, good lord, this is horrible. The Soul Ripper is actually going to go down because he went after the Otham Siege Tanks. The Ithotha is going to be able to take out this power production and the Air Factories. This is horrible in dear ladies and gentlemen. We have a massive change of power here now as the air units to boxer is going to be completely destroyed the ethota is going to be able to go unhindered through everything here and deal massive amounts of damage to this air production facility we have several nuke launchers but they are virtually useless because of all the t uh the t3 missile defense systems we have several broadswords incoming several asfs in the air and mix seems to be struggling quite a lot getting actually enough bombers out into the air though and as we actually saying that the ethotas are moving in closer now we have several ravages online but it depends on how much damage this ethota will do before it actually gets close enough in though if it gets close enough in it can actually deal a lot of damage even though the ravages managed to destroy them and they are targeting the often tanks but i would recommend highly that these Ravages are changing target acquisition to take out that Ithota. And they are currently coming into range. I would highly recommend Mix to actually manually target this. Manually target this. Use your Ravages to manually target and get that Ithota down. Take it down. Get this. There we go. Finally, Mix has responded and reacted. And hopefully, he'll be able to react and take that out before too much damage has been wrought. And finally, after a rampage of unmatched proportions. It looks like he will be able to escape this. A lot of broadswords are coming in here now, and Boxer is taking some fire now, and a lot, and I mean a lot of broadswords are coming in. But the shield is popping back online, though, but this is not a time for Boxer to actually be running out of power, though, because he needs a shield to protect him against all those broadswords, because he's taking a lot of fire. He's going well beyond the yellow. He's going back into the yellow, but now the shields pop up back in time, just in time of him actually doing this. And, good lord, he seems to be able to... Yeah, he has lost his entire nuke defense array from the looks of it. So, now nukes are being fired across the map. There are no nuke defenses in the area, so unless he can actually teleport... And where is Boxer at now? Where is Boxer at? He is currently in the water, actually, because he sensed that he wouldn't be able to stop that nuke. And this is horrible indeed. Unless something can happen, I think the game is over for Team 1. Because Hybrid has been able to get his Maver online, ladies and gentlemen. He decided to stop building that Duke. And a Maver is online. And I think you can see where this game is going. But fantastic. Well done from Mix in. Indeed, at the current moment now, we're just going to speed up a little bit now again because the game is moving very slowly due to the fact that there's so many units. There are an intense amount of broadswords moving in constantly. And the Mavo is constantly just dishing out damage. You have a Megalith here, but it's not going to do anything at all. And what does Miss Mix has to actually do uh, to counter this? Because... What is, where is Boxerus come? He's over here now and he's just teleported away because there's not much else he can do at the moment. He doesn't have much else than some mass and some power. And what he has to do is he just have to get a teleporter and he has a laser. He just needs to find a target to actually snipe then. So if he could actually get himself, let's see, where is Hybrid's commander? 
the hybrid command is here, and it's actually away from the support command. So if you actually build it here, or teleport in here, he will be able to stay away from these, but then, of course, all the shields here will be able to hold him off, though. Where is Kaya Freedon's commander? And he doesn't actually have that much... Well, no, never mind. I spoke too soon. He has uh, nuke. And, yeah, that is currently a good thing to consider, though, as... At the moment, an experimental missile launcher is being produced here. And uh, things are not looking good for Mix indeed, I do have to say, ladies and gentlemen. Things are not looking good indeed. And Boxeroo has been defeated as he tried to get in here. He managed to take out the Mavo, actually. But another one is being built at a rapid pace, actually. This is horrible to see. I mean, Hybrid is bottlenecking in mass, but he can just reclaim this Mavo to actually just get it up again really fast, and he doesn't even have to, I mean, the Mavo is increasingly just speeding up, and this fight has been horrible uh, for Team 1, but well played indeed. Lot of broadswords moving in now, a lot of broadswords moving in, and it looks like they're going after the Tech 3 Naval Factory HQ, and they will be able to take that out and completely destroy any chance of Mix getting out his naval production going. He did get a Tech 3 strategic missile submarine, but I'm not sure how many he got out in time, though. So, all those broadswords were taken out, but again, he managed to take out that Tech 3 naval factory, so no more naval units for Mix. He managed to secure a foothold here, in terms of lots of flares, but if someone just builds a experimental and send it over, it's pretty much going to be over here. And this here is just horrible to see. I mean, it's fantastically built here, but he has so much mass now in hybrid space, that he can just build whatever he wants pretty much. And he's even building a second Mavo! He's building a second Mavo! And at this point in time, that's going to be just horrible for Mix. He's just trying his best. He's not giving up. He's just trying to push through. But a second, and I repeat, a second Ithotha is moving in now from the back. And can Mix see this? Uh, no, he cannot. He doesn't have any power. His power is completely stalled. And he's trying to get a Mavo up and running as a desperate attempt to actually do something about this. But it is pretty much over, ladies and gentlemen. He's pretty much over at this point. And he's getting fat boy online, but there's a lot of ambassadors there for hybrid. We see one of the Ithotas moving in on the sides there. Um, <coughs> he's being assaulted from all the directions here. We have several flares targeting all these uh, ambassadors. He's trying to move in and deal some damage now on his own. And just put out up as many air cleaners as he can. But I wouldn't recommend air cleaners against the ambassadors though, because they are very dangerous. Uh, and fast moving targets. Now it looks like if Thotas are moving in to take out these mass extractors over here, that's a very tactical choice, that's very good. And he stopped the production, I think. No, he hasn't. But he's run out of mass, probably. And the. It won't matter, though, because the Mavel for Hybrid is done, and he will be able to get a second one up and running uh, faster than you can say pie tastes good. <laughs> But yes, it has. Ah, oh, I'm so happy about this match. It was amazing to see that Mix managed to keep the fight going for so long. He managed to secure this navy. He even tried to dip into the naval part over here, but sadly the front and the left flank failed uh, due to some auto balancing issues. I think uh, either it needs to be uh, well patched, fixed, or whatever we call it, or you just need to uh, resort to normal uh, auto balancing where you actually try to balance it yourself. But, as we can also see here now, we have <laughs> we have an Awasa moving in for KF. And this is going to hurt in d and gentlemen, as it just lands in and BOOM! All the support commanders have just gone completely kaboom. And that Awasa is almost getting in rank of veterancy, is placing down another bomb. And that fat boy is going to go down now due to ex constant explosions. Several explosions have been going around as well. <coughs> and, oh god, I've been talking for another, uh, almost an hour now. And we have several Maver shots landing now because now I can turn down it because we're closing in on the final days of the match. And Maver's shells are firing down from above and raining down on Mixer's base. And holy crap on the fish stick, that is 
well played indeed, I do have to say, Mix. You have been phenomenal in trying to get this match going and just keep at it. Just keep it up and just do what it needs to do to actually get this fight going. And where is Mix's commander? Mix's commander is actually up here. We have a commander that has teleported. And can Hybrid see this? I think he can. Yes, he can indeed. And boom, baby! <laughs> oh, that is holy. That was punishing the blow there from that Awasa. But he has his shield, so it managed to protect him against one push there. But now the shielding protects off, so... Uh, Mix has been defeated. He has acknowledged defeat as his commander just go kaboom from the last bomb from the Avasa, and that was amazing. As Team Two takes the victory, ladies and gentlemen, Team Two takes the victory, and I do have to say that was an amazing fight. And well done, well played from Team One, well played from Mix, well played from the other players as well. Hybrid, well done indeed with this power and mass production facility and all of this here. This is a very good idea for the future. Try to get as many factors as you can. Um, Boxer Ru did a very good job, but he was a little bit slow in the beginning of getting more factors online. You should always try to get as many factors up as you can. So, but in that, otherwise, in that sense, very well done indeed. So, with that said, though, I'm going to stop it here now. I'm going to uh, end the stream. And thank you so much for dropping by. And um, if you like this, feel free to follow. That would be amazing. If you like this video, uh, when I post it to YouTube, press the like button and all that stuff. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next video.